Hello, and today I've got two boxes. The first box is technically not really guitar gear, but some good stuff anyway. So let's take a look at what I got. Comes in a cool little case. We have Broken Barrel Whiskey Company to go along with the guitar gear while you're playing the guitar gear. This one is 116 proof. That's pretty high, actually. God, that's 58% alcohol. Holy crap. Um, but I do like my whiskey on the sweet side. So this one is actually uh, finished with port casks. So, should be interesting to go with the guitar gear. So the guitar gear, see what we got. Got a receipt, it's always good. Ooh, a lot of rattling around in this box. All right. Bubble wrap brick, let's open that brick up. Sometimes. Sometimes you feel like that. Well, he was thorough. That's, that's a good thing. Oh, yeah. for you sans amp rack preamp now this one may not look familiar to you you're probably more familiar with say uh, PSA 1 or some of the other rack pre's that are out there this one is the first one first run so um, I think they started out as pedals first but this was the first version of the rack they ever came out with which is kind of rare um, you see a lot of the other ones uh, on Reverb and eBay, but this one was the first. Actually, funny story. Um, first time I ever experienced Sans Amp was one of the members of my first band. Actually used it for um, his distortion pedal. It was, I think at the time it was like an amp modeling thing. I'll show a picture of that one as well. And um, he still plays that one today. That's how good that stuff was when it came out and it stands test of time. So the cool thing about this one is we're going to take a look and see what this sounds like uh, with factory settings and see how it holds up against, you know, the Raxilla back here. All right. Got El Diablo. Got the sand zip in the rack. We're going to find out one of the pitfalls of buying vintage rack gear. Um, it's because sometimes you get stuff that worked great out of the box. <laughs> And sometimes you get stuff that kind of craps out on you. So, got to open it up, we got to clean the pots, got to clean the connectors, hope that there's nothing major. I think it's just a scratchy pot, maybe a dirty output jack or something. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the inside of the Sanzam Rack Brand. Not overly complicated. Um, so what I'm going to do is take uh, some deoxid, and I'm going to hit pretty much all the pots here. 
all, you, all the jacks and the switches and uh, kind of clear up any of the audio badness we had prior. Hopefully uh, she sounds good after this and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, that's right. All right, got Sans amp back on the desk. It's fully cleaned up. Actually sounds pretty good now. All the, the popping and the cutting outs have been cleaned up with the oxid. Um, also got Raxilla back here, fully functional. Fully functional Death Star back there. So I was thinking, I think it's time for a new feature. I give you the wheel of Rack Destiny. Sans amp versus one of these 18 rack preamps over here. Most are classics. I think Sin 2 is the only one that is current. No, Sin 2 and Nirvana, I think the only two, well, and Black Widow are the only two that are currently in production. Uh, everything else, I believe, would be classic, classic. So let's see, who's it gonna be? The Mesa Quad. That's a tough one. Let's see if the sand amp's up to it. All right, so sand amp's in the rack, integrated into the rack. Uh, we're gonna go through for the clean tones, my black Stratocaster. So it's a 90s American made body, um, lipstick pickups, and a warm up versus maple neck. Going into um, either one of these two preamps, I switch them with a GCX and a ground control from Voodoo Labs. And then no effects, we do this dry. And then we've got uh, V800 H and H power amp going into uh, my vintage high walk cabinet. So, micing those with um, SM57s, and we'll get some decent tones out of there. See the difference between these two. So first up, this is the Sands amp. Let's go Mesa Quad. All right, I'll play a couple of single note type nonsense and see what that sounds like. Back to quad. Um, back to our friend, the Sans Amp. Again. So what you notice, the Sans amp, actually, I have the treble cranked and I have the bass back down, even though I'm using kind of um, an amp sim or, or one of their, their factory settings. I'm actually using uh, the Fender rhythm setting and just, man, it's kind of muddy. It doesn't really have a, a lot of articulation. One thing I liked about the quad is the quad is much clearer when you compare the two. Um, let's move on to mid game. All right, so we're going to do some more tones with uh, the Sans Amp. This is the higher gain stuff. So Sans Amp actually has two boogie... Um, simulations in it. Uh, one's a rhythm, one's a lead, so we're gonna do the rhythm first. Uh, for this one, I changed up the guitar a little bit. I'm going with uh, the blue custom telly with reverse headstock that I built. Um, pickups are actually just run-of-the-mill um, Stumac uh, Golden Age pickups. 
Uh, also changed up the power, so we're gonna go to the Mesa 290 at this point, and, but everything else is pretty much the same. So, start off with our sand dip. into the boogie. style as Sanzef would say and so I'm going into channel 2 of the quad uh, everything pretty much is the same uh, one thing I do have to note the noise floor <laughs> this gain level is pretty hideous so there's gonna be a lot of noise uh, hopefully there's some bad guitar playing kind of intermix with the noise and get an idea of what you sound like so we'll do the same thing do the Sanzef first and we'll switch over to the quad <laughs> Quad. And there you have it, uh, the original Sanzap Rack preamp. Um, pretty good fight. Um, kind of held its own for a little bit in the quad. I think the problem is the quad, I think, is a lot more clarity, and the quad actually has a lot more versatility. Um, so if this is a two preamp enter, one preamp leaves, quad's leaving. Sanzap going to the scrap heap. But think about it what the quad goes for these days in terms of price wise, reverb and, and eBay. Um, this was relatively inexpensive. I think there's a couple of them on eBay at the time of this video. I think they're around 300 bucks. Not too bad. It's kind of an expensive pedal almost. Um, but yeah, I like the quad better. Hopefully you guys do too. If not, or if you do, make a comment down in the comments here. Uh, also, hope you guys like the added Wheel of Rack Destiny. So what I'm going to end up doing is I think I'll I'll bring out new preamps, unbox them, and we're going to spin the wheel and see who they fight up against. Uh, I was kind of bummed. There's some preamps I really hope would pop up in this one. Um, thanks for watching. Till next time. Almost forgot. Broken Barrel Whiskey Company. Um, 116 proof, 58% alcohol. Um, Bourbon whiskey finish in port staff. So it should be on the sweet side. It's kind of my thing. Let's see. We got a glass with some ice in it. Get a little cooler on. Doesn't have a heavy peat or smoky smell, which is really not my thing. So let's, let's, let's see how it tastes. Actually, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's um, not the greatest thing I've ever tasted, but not bad per se. Um, not overly smoky. It's hard to actually put my finger on what it tastes like. Yeah.